Hey there, Goblin Gang. Nico back with a new format and a new haircut. Let's see which one lasts longer. This time around, I've got the Bees Combat Systems Aptum Carrier in medium, as usual, set up with several different uh, Bees parts and accessories. No, oh, and a new patch, which is now available on the Goblin Dynamics Store. Link in the description. Uh, apparently, I need to say this up front, but if you found my content useful or are feeling generous, throw a like and a subscribe on the channel. Uh, that may help this become self-funding eventually. Anyway, let's get started. Before we get into the details of the carrier itself, I want to talk a bit about Bees Combat Systems as a company. Otherwise, a lot of what I say just isn't going to make much sense. Uh, Bees is a small, berry compliant gear company operating out of Utah for well over a decade now. Uh, they're not particularly well known, but I think they do deserve some more attention. What they are known for, though, is fantastic customer service, making everything to order, and doing semi-custom work. Everyone I've talked to about Bees has uh, some anecdote about how great their customer service is. Uh, for example, I've gotten a response to their contact us form in 10 minutes uh, late at night. Uh, well, that's great to know, their made-to-order model and uh, their custom work is much more important here. So, while Bees does stock some particularly popular items in their inventory, they mostly make their products to order. Uh, this has a few consequences um, to you as a customer. Starting with the negative, there's a definite lead time whenever you order from them. Uh, currently on their website, they're quoting uh, one to three weeks, which may be a little pro a bit of a problem depending on your needs and uh, your desire for instant gratification. However, this allows bees to do some unique things compared to other companies. Uh, if you check their website, you'll see they've got a really wide range of products. Um, if you dig in a little bit deeper, you'll find that they're all available in almost a dozen different colors and patterns. Most importantly, you can order it all immediately. So you end up with a lot of uh, options for kit in many modern and older camouflage patterns uh, that you can just order. There's no waiting on a questionable restock, an inventory drop, or what have you, and no trying to find it off scalpers on tax swap later. You just order it, and in less than a month, you've got it. Uh, that's definitely a trade-off I'm willing to accept, especially in a market crowded with uh, you know hyped-up drops and waiting on vaporware product. Because everything is made to order, they can do custom and semi-custom work. The main way seems to be modification of their existing products in various small ways, and I'll be talking about uh, some modifications that I'd like throughout this video. Uh, so that should have you filled in, and my comments um, will make some more sense now. We spent enough time looking at me, let's uh, get this off this uh, tree onto my table and get into it. The Optum is a fully modular carrier, meaning you buy each piece separately. This allows for significant customization with two different front bags, four rear, ten different cummerbunds, and five front panels, not counting different sizes or colors. There's 400 different combinations using only those four parts. I've complained about modularity before, but the build-to-order model takes away one of the common problems, which is getting all the specific parts you want in matching colors at the same time. Because you buy this as a build-a-carrier workshop, I'll review it the same way. I'll mention which specific piece each one is, and there will be a Twitter thread with the specific links in the description, just like last time. Starting with the front bag, we've got pretty typical construction. It's shaped vaguely to the plate. Up front here, there is a panel to attach your cummerbund at the front. Then there's also this Velcro overlap panel. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this. It doesn't have any molly cuts or anything. It's just an additional flap. I think you could take this off, and that's what my custom request is going to be. 
Here, there's also a, a Velcro lined kangaroo pouch that will take inserts. Up on the top section, we've got laser cut Molly through this Velcro panel, which would have been nice on the flap. It's four cuts tall, four cuts wide, about equivalent to two straps, which would be here and here. That's big enough to fit a juggernaut mount, which is pretty standard. Between the panels, there's a series of vertical cuts. You can use it for hanging a placard or cable routing. There are also higher cuts to adjust the height of your placard. You might notice that there is no traditional cable or tube routing. Instead, there are more small cuts. A little hard to see here. You can use this with their cable routing kit, which is Velcro strips that you can push through and wrap around your tube or cable. Alternatively, you can just use zip ties. The plate feeds into the bottom and secures with the flap. The plate fits snugly and here there's two more small straps for hanging any extra accessories off the bottom. The back panel is shaped similarly with the same plate shape and straps at the top corners. There is a Velcro band for ID patches and laser cut molly throughout. It is six cuts wide here, 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 and 11 tall. That's equivalent to six wide and five or six traditional molly straps tall with a little more vertical adjustment possible than just standard webbing. The plate securing flap also wraps around and I like that the flap is secured with velcro to the panel instead of just wrapping around. The plate fits in and attaches just like the front. You might notice that there's no zippers for back panels. I've said before that I don't like zippered back panels, so that's not a big issue for me. If that's a requirement for you, this isn't the right carrier for you. Now, let's flip it over. Flipping it over, we can get a good look at the overall shape of the carrier. It has what I call an hourglass shape with straight straps attached to the corners of the plate, which brings it in closer to your neck and in on your shoulders. We can also see that there's no stretch panels or padding on the inside. This makes the inside look looser than the Faro or the JPC, which have st stretch panels and conform better to the shape of the plate. Or the Vicarian, which has a layer of internal padding. The inside looks loose, but it fits the plate perfectly and holds it securely. There are two strips of Velcro on each plate, which you can attach pads that bees makes too. I did not get them, but I regret that now. While we're here, this is medium sappy cut, 
but there are also large sappy and 10 by 12 shooter and swimmer cuts available. Now for a closer look at the shoulders. The shoulders are adjusted by a simple velcro overlap. These straps on the front push through. You may remember from the Ferris Slickster video that they had a similar attachment method and had a small Kydex card as a tool to adjust. The Aptum is easier to work with because the Velcro is only on the strap. It doesn't go all the way into the body of the carrier. But to make it easier, you can use a popsicle stick to hold it open and push a strip of manila folder in to prevent sticking. Then reach into the bottom to find the strap and adjust it. It's pretty easy. Just make sure that you lay the straps flat on the inside. We've seen the shoulder pads before in the FCPC video, but here they are again. It's a simple trifold secured with Velcro and has the bees honeycomb hex pattern. On the outside, there's laser cut molly. Five cuts on a six inch overall length. I don't put anything on it, but it's a great place to attach tube routing. They go on nice and easy, so on to the cummerbund. By now, I'm sure you know that uh, the cummerbund is incredibly important to me, and I think it's one of the more important parts of uh, how a plate carrier fits. Uh, bees gives you plenty of options. There's, I think, 10 different um, elastic, elastic with storage cells, skeletal, a couple different molly options, and then either attaching in the front with Velcro, like this one does, or using tubes. This specific one is what they call the three inch grid. Um, grid is what they call their, their laser cut uh, molly pattern. It is three straps tall using two cuts and then you can attach through the top and the bottom. And as you can see here, it's two sided. I'm entirely working on the front side and then there's also a back side as well. So it's double layered if uh, you really need to attach something front and rear. As you can see it's a little bit fiddly. I think I caught, caught in something there. Yep, so there we go. Uh, it is seven columns long with a little bit of uh, extra space on either end. Um, on the rear section there is elastic with stretches and then a little internal stop ribbon there, which uh, keeps it from stretching too far. The inside also has the loop Velcro, which uh, should make it compatible with uh, cr the Cry um, smart pouch system, I believe is what they call it. I don't have anything from that, so I can't tell you, but that's what it looks like. Uh, I like the three inch ones because they're narrow enough. I can uh, adjust the, um, the, the positioning how I like, which is, I believe I pointed this out before, attached to the bottom, and I've already sized this for myself, uh, attached to the bottom of the rear panel, and then bring it around. Get this flap out of the way and attach to the top of the front panel, which is also part of what makes uh, this flap not work as well for me. It kind of just bunches up on the top, and then that allows an offset of 
the plates. All right, let's take a look at all the uh, fun stuff you can stick on it. In addition to the core carrier, I picked up a few extra accessories that I wore and tested the Aptum with. These were a front placard, a hydration carrier, and a micro chest rig. I also use and have been using their uh, roll-up dump pouch for a few years. It's great, um, as well as some other accessories, which are generally just really solid. Uh, it's a dump pouch, not a whole lot to say about it. Uh, I do like still that Bees has all of these um, options available that you can all order together, matching. So if you like one-stop shopping, that's a benefit. So first up, here's the placard. Uh, this is one of, I believe, five. It's their uh, G-Hook Triple Cell Elastic TQ um, placard. It has uh, these three elastic loops, which can fit AR magazines um, with a little bit of pressure and a narrower magazine like these, uh, these metal ones. You can even fit two, although I think that's starting to stretch it a little more. But yeah, two fit in there. Um, I wasn't able to do it with the P mags, but that's something to be aware of. Uh, if you look here, it has loops on the front and the back for bungee shock cords. Um, Bees does not sell these with the shock cords, although I bet you you could uh, send them an email and request that for your set if that's something you'd like. On the other hand, Spiritus also uh, makes them uh, that you can buy separately. On the front, there is a single column, uh, four cuts of the grid laser cut molly, so you can attach a... Uh, pistol magazine or what have you and then of course the uh, what what makes this different is the elastic loop on the bottom and the sides uh, like the name suggests the one on the bottom fits a tourniquet and then the ones on the sides here uh, you can just stick in say a sharpie a glow stick or uh, anything else that kind of fits in that mold. I like it. Um, the G-hooks are really nice. This is actually my first time working with a G-hooked uh, placard. And instead of having a buckle, it just hooks directly on. It's a little more effort to put it on and take it off than, say, just a buckle. but with the way that um, a lot of placards are being used, uh, you just stick it on and leave it on. That's no big deal, and the lower profile is, uh, is a little bit nicer. Uh, I do like that. Uh, if you like the G-hook um, and the triple elastic here, so this specific version is, I believe, about $65. Um, I'll come back and fix that. But there is a version that doesn't have the, uh, the extra elastic for significantly cheaper. I think it's just $35 for just that straight piece. Um, so if budget is a concern, that's something to look at. Here we've got the Bees Hydration Carrier. It's incredibly basic, but that's not really a bad thing. Um, it's just a pouch to hold the camelback bladder, and it works perfectly fine for that. It attaches using the grid uh, molly system and uh, is a perfect fit for the back of the, uh, of the bees, which I really appreciate. There's a lot of times I've used uh, hydration carriers that don't really fit onto a, uh, a back panel. So I, I, I do appreciate this. Um, so there's no pass-through 
you might see like uh, on some other ones that have like a uh, a little elastic section that you pull the uh, you pull the hose through. You just poke it out through the sides. Um, there's no dedicated hanger. However, it does have this strip with uh, several holes here that you can run a uh, zip tie through or this little uh, this little loop. You can run some 550 cord just to keep your thing in place. Uh, from what I've found, it specifically fits this, which is the Camelback Crux uh, two and a half liter pack really well. And don't worry, um, I'm not gonna make you watch me put this through. Uh, like any big molly thing, it takes a while. Um, but it is a good fit. Uh, there is a laser cut molly panel. Again, their grid system here. Uh, on the back, it is four cuts wide, six tall, six cuts tall, so approximately three standard molly straps. Um, I wouldn't suggest mounting anything too heavy on there, but it's nice having the option at least. This is the Bees Aptum Micro X. It's uh, their entry into the micro modular chest rig uh, space. It's effectively comparable with the Haley Micro or the uh, Spiritus Fight Light. Um, I only have the Haley one, obviously. Realistically, I'm not a huge fan of the concept of the uh, the micro chest rig um, for various reasons. I'm not going to get too deep into that. Um, but this is an excellent example. Uh, Bees makes a uh, AR and AK version. This is the AR version, um, so I can't really talk about the uh, the AK. The AR one comes with this three cell elastic insert, uh, just takes three magazines. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the one that's shown on their website, which has uh, three cells plus a tourniquet. Uh, when I asked them about it, basically the three cell version didn't properly fit P mags or other larger AR mags. It was built around um, just an aluminum magazine. It's too bad because I totally want to try one of those out. It looks pretty neat. Um, I did try this with the Haley uh, 4 magazine SMG insert. Don't have any other inserts to test it with, but it looks like it is at least uh, somewhat compatible with other options on the market. The front pouches, it has two um, with a flap that covers it. One neat little thing is that this flap is Velcroed in and removable. So you can take it out and leave them just open topped with uh, some kind of insert. And speaking of inserts, for example, in here, I have the included pistol insert, which takes you know two Glock magazines. So it works. Uh, on the back, there is a Velcro panel with a delete as well um, for mounting it as a placard. And the loops, um, the loops on the side are actually really interesting. Instead of just being fixed loops, they are uh, several half-inch loops here. For example, yeah, uh, on top and bottom, there's four half-inch loops with a one-inch uh, one inch loop right in the middle. So you can adjust uh, exactly where the buckles attach, which um, seems to be the trend with bees. There's a lot of customizability. So uh, that's pretty neat. Um, comes with an H harness type. If this fits you properly, uh, works out well. Again, the bees grid, uh, 
these grid cuts on each shoulder so you can attach something there if that's what you want to do. Uh, all in all, it's a solid implementation of a concept I don't particularly like. Alright, so with this actually on, um, generally it feels really solid, uh, as I would expect from any modern plate carrier. Uh, it interacts well with my gear. Um, yeah, I can come back reach that. Uh, with the dangler there's a little bit of interaction with, um, with where I put the pistol magazines, but that's alright. Uh, not the worst. Could be okay, just a little bit of a torso twist to clear them up, or if I was you know, steadily wearing this I could readjust my kit a little bit. Uh, I had two big issues with this. Um, well, two and a half. First off is I do kind of notice the lack of padding. It's not that bad though, so uh, I, I've got... That was my fault. Um, so fitting the cummerbund though, the, uh, the B's 3 inch cummerbund only comes in a single size. In between the extra little additions and uh, the Velcro in the back. The seven cell means that I have to have the cummerbund attached in the center in the back. No overlap, just, just centered up attachment. And then also centered in the front. Um, that means I lose the front molly piece, uh, molly column, uh, when I'm wearing it. If I was using the cummerbunds more, and if this was a play carrier I was wearing more often, then uh, you know, with a heavier load, I definitely have a bigger problem with it. Uh, that also does make it a little bit more difficult just uh, j just putting on correctly every time. Um, it, it's easier if I can just velcro on the flush ends and just wrap it around. Um, so with the uh, elastic piece, I do have it under slight tension, not enough to like dig into my back like I was having issues with the, uh, that, that Pharaoh one before, but uh, it does shift a little bit more than when I had the, uh, the, the Pharaoh Assault Cummerbund. Not really a bad thing, um, it's okay. I do wish bees made different sizes of their cummerbund. I could stand to lose two, uh, two, two columns on it, um, or maybe something stiffer instead of the elastic. Overall, it fits kind of cozy, although I do feel that the, um, the shoulder straps are a little bit wider than they have been on, uh, on other carriers. And because, of course, I've had time to measure it, um, the shoulder straps at the narrowest here are about nine and a hair, so about nine inches wide. Uh, on the Vicarian, they were eight and a half. And on the Pharaoh and the uh, LBTs, they're about eight inches. So there's definitely some difference there. Uh, this may again have to do with, you know, I'm a small guy, then you may find that this is a little bit more comfortable if you're a little bit bigger than I am, but something to be aware of, and I talk about my personal experience. Uh, it's only about a half inch to an inch, so it's not a huge difference, but I can definitely feel it. Could be a lot worse though, and I've definitely worn a lot worse. so. It's comfortable enough, especially if you've, you're a little bit bigger on than I am. I'm changing up the comparison section a bit this time. The Bees Aptum is the seventh carrier that I've featured on this channel, so I now have some more points of comparison available. Uh, I feel you can't do a proper review in a vacuum, especially when alternatives are available and comparing a carrier to ones I've already covered, and that you may be 
familiar with gives some more meaningful discussion. At least that's what I think. This also lets me focus more on a single main carrier instead of bouncing between two like I've done before and lets me make some more precise suggestions. Now, let's get back to the carriers. My comparison carriers today are the Faro Concepts FC PC V5 with the Faro Assault Cummerbund and the Cane Pro Gear Vicaria. I've talked about both of these carriers before and I like both of them a lot for very different reasons. And uh, I think that the Bees is in excellent company uh, between these two. For this comparison, I used black for the Bees Aptum, orange for the Vicarian, and blue for the FCPC, except over the blue mark where I used green because I thought the blue was going to look a little more different. Um, also here is where I uh, over rotated the marker so the actual line is the closer one. As I mentioned earlier in fit and feel the bees is a little bit uh, wider and you can also see that on the inside where compared to the FCPC and the Vicarian are much narrower the uh, bees is a little bit wider and especially right on the shoulder. It's uh, fairly small through most of it, only <coughs> a little more than an inch versus the FCPC and only about half an inch more than the Vicarian. But I did notice it, so if you're fairly slim like I am, um, the Aptum might not necessarily be the best choice, especially if you really like uh, having more of your shoulder open. That said, still plenty of space on the shoulder, but there's our comparison. As you can see, they all pretty much sit at the same place on the collar and at the bottom. Basically close enough that it's all the same. With the front plate chalked up, we can uh, see that there's definitely some space around the edges and especially in the corners up here. It's not as much space as, say, the Vicarian had or uh, the LBT-6094, but it's definitely more than the FCPC did. But the FCPC was remarkably tight. I know Bees has made soft armor carriers before, and I kind of wonder if this is built around using a uh, plate backer but I can't think of too many plate backers um, for sappy that aren't you know, very specifically sized. Uh, that said, it's still pretty close. Just an interesting uh, piece of data for you. I've already done videos for the Vicarian and the FCPC, so I'm not going to go into them too much here. The Vicarian is a fantastic value for a first plate carrier or otherwise just getting into kit. The FCPC is an excellent modern military plate carrier. So where does the Aptum fit between the? Price-wise, at least, right in the middle. The Vicarian sells for about $150 typically and has been on some smoking hot sales while KNA Pro Gear is in the middle of moving. The FCPC, configured as reviewed without any pouches or whatever, costs about $385. The Aptum, slick with just the front and back plate bags and one of the cheaper cummerbunds like I have here in a solid color comes in at 210 or as configured here with the shoulder pads placard hydration pouch in woodland costs about $390 delivered same as the FCPC slick what you're getting out of the Aptum other than being American made as compared to the Vicarian it is customizability even if you don't get a custom piece like I mentioned you can do before 
there's a lot of options for the Aptum. In fact, if you're brand new to plate carriers, I would suggest avoiding this. The sheer variety and number of choices can be intimidating or confusing if you don't have a solid idea of what you want already. But if you're looking for something very specific, the Aptum family is a great place to look. Comfort wise, the Aptum is fine. That said, I did prefer the narrower straps on either of these. Of course, I'm a pretty small dude and hyper fixated on plate carriers. I was able to put this on and feel in about 30 seconds that the straps were wider than the plate carriers I've been wearing previously. Objectively, the straps are still very well placed and give you plenty of base to shoulder. So if you're larger than I am or don't have shouldering habits built from wearing carriers with narrower straps, that probably isn't going to be an issue for you. I did prefer the Pharaoh Assault Cummerbund to, to the Bees one. On the other hand, the Ferro Cummerbund cost more than twice what this Cummerbund did, so I should hope I liked it better. In addition, I could use that, that Cummerbund on the bees, and I did do it, despite the colors not matching, and it was incredibly comfortable. Part of my issue with the bees comes from having used the Assault Cummerbund, with its very specific sizing and there not being sizing available for the bees. But that's pretty standard for my size trying to fit into one size fits all. That said, all of this, considering a single piece, I can't say enough good things about this placard. It combines the standard three mag panel with minimal unobtrusive additions into a tidy little package for 60 to $65 depending on the color you get. And it's just fantastic. All in all, I like the Aptum and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it if it's something you're already considering or if you have a solid idea of the plate carrier you're looking for and the Aptum can fill your desires. Just in general though, check out Bees and their kit. There's some great stuff in there and it's a really solid company that not many people know about. Especially if you like woodland or other less common camouflage patterns and are getting tired of waiting for the next hyped up drop. At the time of recording and uploading this, I've already ordered a new front plate bag, cummerbund, and a shock cord set for this placard. Once I get them in, I'll record a shorter follow-up on those pieces specifically. Uh, let me know what you think of this new format, or if you have any specific questions uh, in the comments below. If you just can't get enough of me, check out the Goblin Dynamics Twitter, where I'm a little more active. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, buy a couple of patches from the store. I'm still doing this all out of pocket without any sponsorships. And uh, if you're curious, my inventory is right back there. Both of those links are going to be down in the description, along with a link to a Twitter thread with uh, all the specific items that I've shown and talked about here. Uh, please drop a like on this video, especially if it was helpful or had useful information for you, and subscribe for more videos like this one. Next up, I'll be getting Sundaray about this warlock. As always, thank you for watching, and have a good one.